Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. English is the most popular and widely spoken language in the nation of the United Kingdom and across the Atlantic Ocean in the United States. But this doesn't mean that British people and American people speak identically, it's quite the opposite. There are huge differences in the English spoken in the UK and the English spoken in the US. These differences of course include spelling as we've looked at in the past, but there's another huge difference too, perhaps the most startling difference between these two versions of English, and that's when something has a different name in each nation. These different names for the same things have caused much conversation and debate between Brits and Americans for some time now. More often than not, when I get the chance to speak to Americans, I'll ask them about names for things. I remember one time speaking to an American and they were confused to hear that their word for a type of pie was used in Britain as the name for someone who repairs shoes. And another time I explained to some Americans a nickname we have for cigarettes here in the UK, which left them rather shocked, which is completely understandable. It's a pretty unpleasant word. I'm getting a bit off track here aren't I? The point I'm trying to make is that there are huge differences in the common tongue shared by these two nations. It led me to wonder why this is the case. Well I don't think there's one blanket reason as to why names vary so much. It's most likely a case by case thing. However I feel the main reason we have these different names for things is due to outside cultures that have affected these nations and given their language the English is spoken in these nations. In example French played a large role in shaping the English used in Britain due to the events of 1066 while languages like Spanish and Italian shaped the English spoken in the USA due to people from those nations migrating to the new world. That's probably a way oversimplified explanation of things though. As I said, we will be able to understand these differences more as we look into specific examples. And as there are so many different names for things across the US and the UK, that instead of doing just one video on the subject, I want to make this topic an ongoing series called British vs American Names that I'll come back to every now and then. And in this first edition of the series, I want to talk about not just the names of food in general, but specifically the different names of vegetables and other grown produce across the UK and the US. Let's find out what different names are used in these nations and more importantly, where exactly did they come from? And yes I know some of these aren't technically vegetables and some of these names are for slightly different vegetable variations but shush. Let's kick things off with everyone's favourite cucumber imposter. Here in the UK we call this veg a courgette, while over in the USA it has the much funner sounding name of a zucchini. These are a type of squash and while they can actually grow to be way bigger, most of the time their harvest is still in their little vegetable infancy due to tasting nicer when they aren't fully grown. This is a great place to start as the two names this veg have perfectly demonstrate outside languages shaping British and American English. Both these names relate to the fact that it's an undeveloped squash, but they borrow from different languages. Let's start that British name of courgette. This is actually a French loan word as is the diminutive of the French word courge meaning marrow slash squash so the name means a little squash and likewise with the American name of zucchini that too is diminutive and means a little squash slash marrow too but instead of coming from French it comes from Italian being diminutive of the Italian word zucca meaning gourd slash squash. This makes all the sense in the world as I mentioned French played a large role in British English and Italian played a large role in shaping American English. Next up we have a type of edible green that here in the UK we call rocket, while over in the US it is known as arugula. Now as cool as the name rocket is, it has nothing to do with the kind of rockets that fly to the moon. Both the UK and US names come from corruptions of an older name, both arriving from the Italian peninsula. The British name of rocket is a corruption of the Latin name Oluca, which to the Romans was a type of cabbage, and this word can even be seen in rocket's fancy Latin name too. This Latin name for the veg then created the Italian name for it, Lucola which came to the USA with Italian migrant where it seems to have been corrupted into arugula as it is still seen to this day. Here in the UK we call this type of pea a marge tout which unsurprisingly is a French name and if you have an understanding of the French language you will know what it means as it literally translates into meaning eat all in English. This is because unlike other peas all of the vegetable is edible even the pod. However it seems that while here in the UK we use this name for all kinds of peas that can be eaten in the pod, in the USA there are different names for different specific kinds of peas that we don't use in Britain. Most noticeably there are snow peas. The name snow pea apparently comes from the fact that they can appear white like snow if shined in a certain light. Or it might come from that these peas grow early in the season and aren't deterred by snow. 
There's also root vegetable that has two rather different names in the UK and US. In the UK we call this root vegetable a swede, but in the USA this veg is known as a rutabaga. These are two seriously different names, and what's strange about the British name is it sounds a lot like the name for a person from Sweden. And the reason the British use the name swede for this veg is because it's properly believed that the veg comes from Sweden. In fact, it was initially known as the Swedish turnip, which over time was shortened to just swede. The American name for this vegetable, rutabaga, also comes from Swedish, despite it not being as literally Swedish as the name Swede. I read it meaning various things in Swedish, from it meaning root lump, to thick root, to baggy root, to cabbage root. So many possibilities as what this name actually means. I also just want to cover these two pretty quickly, as while they aren't completely different names, for these two vegetables it seems they got the name shortened in the USA. In Britain we call these beetroot, while in the USA they're just called beets, and likewise we call this sweet corn, while it seems Americans call it just corn. Both these words of just beet and corn have a both seem to come from murky ancient origins, but the root part we add to beetroot here in the UK is because it's a root vegetable, and the sweet we add to sweet corn is because it does have a somewhat sweet taste. It's not the most interesting, but I still want to cover them. What is a tad more interesting, however, is the names for these legumes. I know them as chickpeas, as that's what they're known as here in the UK. But over in America, they seem to have a different name. Garbanzo beans. The chick part of this name has nothing to do with baby birds, but comes from the Latin kicker, meaning pea, so the name could be seen as meaning pea peas. Eventually, the word pea got added to the end of this name and they became known as chickpeas. The American name of garbanzo bean is believed to come from the Spanish, which makes sense too as the history Spain has in the Americas. It's thought to more specifically, however, derive from the Basque language, which derives from the Iberian Peninsula, and in Basque, it's thought to mean dry seed, which is most likely because they are usually eaten after being dried out. These small white beans are known as haricot beans here in the UK. This name oddly comes from Aztec root, coming from their word for beans, ecotel, which the French corrupted into haricot, and then the UK borrowed. So why on earth did the Americans not use this name, which stems from their own native people? Well, the name used for these beans in the USA is navy beans, and this name is because the US Navy serve up copious amounts of these beans to their sailors, as they're easy to store in tins on board ships. Carrying on with beans, we have these guys, which here in the UK are known as broad beans, most often seen sleeping in their blankety bed. Broad of course means wide in size, and these beans do have somewhat wide pods, so that must be where the name comes from. Though in the United States, they're known as fava beans. This more exotic sounding name derives from the Italian name for beans, which Americans use too. And the Italian word of fava seems to come from the Latin fava, which just means bean, so in the USA, they can be seen as being called bean beans. And finally, Finally, on the bean front, there's one last bean I wish to talk about. The one that we call in the UK green beans, and what the US call string beans. It's pretty easy to see why here in the UK we call them green beans. They are well green. But why string beans? Is it because they are long and narrow like string? Well, according to Miriam Webster, string beans are a variety of kidney beans that have stringy fibre on their pods, so perhaps it's this string that the name string bean is referring to. Let's move away from beans, however, and look into a type of lettuce. In the UK, this is known as cos lettuce, but in the US, it is known as romaine lettuce. But in all honesty, I swear I've heard this called romaine lettuce over here. Perhaps it's a name growing in popularity. Nevertheless, both these names seem to originate from where people saw the vegetables coming from. There are two places where this lettuce is thought to originate from, either the Greek island of Kos or farmed in the Roman Empire, hence why the two possible names for the stuff reference these Mediterranean places. And now, perhaps the most well-known instance of a veg having a different name across the two nations, the aubergine, or as it's known as stateside, the eggplant. As both these names are pretty darn odd, while aubergine might sound fancy than eggplant, it really isn't as nice. It's believed to derive from Sanskrit and their word vantingana, which is thought to mean cure for wind disorder. Why is this the case? Well, it's thought that eating aubergine would help relieve people who are causing too much wind, shall we say. Like I said, it's not the most fancy of names. But what about the American name of eggplant? I mean, have you seen these things? They're long and purple and look nothing like eggs. And while that is the case for the classic eggplant we have in our minds now, other species of the veg are more similar in shape, size, and even color to eggs. But as they've been cultivated to be bigger and more purple, they've lost their egg shape, but evidently the name stuck around. 
And that's just about all the veg and other produce I want to talk about with different names across the US and UK. I mean, we could talk about potatoes and the variety of names they get across the UK and US when you slice them up. But the whole fries versus chips versus crisp debacle really could have a video unto itself. Though, let me know about some other veg I may have missed out on. And most importantly, what subject area would you like to see me cover in the next edition of British vs American Names? Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patreon is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.